Hey guys, how you doing? John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle. And today I want to cover two very important topics, all right, that are often neglected in the seduction community. Okay, when guys are trying to learn this stuff. Two very real things that impact like the girl's decision to sleep with you and her decision to stick around, okay? So the first one is called anti-slut defense. Let's see official terminology, otherwise known as ASD. And the second one is called the seven hour rule. Okay, that was invented by Mystery from the book, The Mystery Method. He talks about how there's an average of seven hours, okay, four to 10 hours of comfort that's needed before a girl is comfortable enough to sleep with you such that she won't get buyer's remorse and regret it, okay? So those two concepts will be discussed at length, okay? Before we continue, please like and subscribe below if you have not already. Uh, make sure you press the notification bell so you're getting alerted to new videos. So I dug through, I have my old posts from RSC Nation. As you all, or some of you know, it's been down all year. RSD, the fucking shade ball scammers have disappeared in a lot of ways. But I will read through some of this post here. I wrote this like seven years ago in 2012, but the principles remain true to today, okay? So, First off, I'll, I'll define what anti-slut defense is. So anti-slut defense is the girl wants to have sex with you, but she doesn't want to feel like a slut about it. Okay, she doesn't want to be judged by you. She doesn't want to judge herself and feel bad about herself. Okay, she doesn't want society to judge her or her friends to judge her. And women are kind of given this narrative that if they sleep around or fuck a stranger, that that's considered a slutty thing, okay? And then it carries negative self-image thoughts and, you know, she's thinking bad about herself and also uh, negative, you know, social opinion from others, okay? Including her friends and family. So, and yourself. So this really gets in the way, right? Because she wants to fuck you, but she doesn't want to have to like own up to, to what's going on on the surface, okay? Um, and then we'll get into the, how that applies to seven hour rule. So let me go through my post here, my old post, okay? So I said, number one, I'll make explicit statements about my own standards, okay? Although I lie about these standards, such as one of my biggest turnoffs is a slutty girl and so many girls are slutty these days. I'm glad that you are not, all right? So you're positioning her against this like enemy, which is sluttiness, okay? And you say, oh, yeah, that enemy is bad. That turns me off. You're in this other group. I'm glad you're not like that. Now, keep in mind, <laughs> her immediate actions about actually having sex with you, say you just met five minutes ago and, you're, and she wants to have sex with you, that on the surface does not, you're not going to be like, oh, well, you are in that category because you're fucking a stranger after five minutes. You're just going to be like, oh, no, look, I can tell you're not in that category. All right? you're, a lot of these things are just asserting, but it's going to help her feel more comfortable about it. Okay. Um, I'll say along with intelligence, a girl not being slutty are two of the biggest things I look for. Okay. I'll even go as far to say, I meet a lot of women and they're either slutty or dumb or both. I should actually start saying that again. That's a good one. <laughs> I tell her that she's a rare type of girl. And again, I say, I never provide logical argument for why I can tell she's not slutty. I just assert it clearly. If she's fucking me right away, then she is slutty by the stupid common social definition. But merely asserting you can tell she's not and that that meets a standard of yours makes her feel like you don't just fuck random whores and that she herself is not a random whore. Okay, so that's a very nuanced point. Rewatch the <laughs> rewind and rewatch at the end to make sure you absorb that if you are so inclined or have the time or whatever. Number two, I'll make the sex and her feel meaningful, in other words, not cheap, by saying, I feel a really amazing connection with you. I can't explain it. <laughs> then she feels like not just another notch in your belt. About half the time, they'll just agree about the connection. The other half the time, they'll ask why I think that. And again, I'll assert, okay, which means stating without proof, that I just feel that way and can't explain it, but that it's amazing. This generates awesome emotions and makes her feel as though there is something deeper there than just surface attraction or lust. Okay. Very good. Very clever. Number three, I'll use role reversal. This means, um, 
saying shit to the chick that she would normally say to you. So I'll say, I have a rule. I don't have sex with girls I just met, so don't try it. I'll make them pinky promise that all we're going to do is make out back at the house after the date or after the, taking them home from the club. But then she gets horny as fuck and has what's called plausible deniability, right? You went to your house not to fuck, okay? So now she's absolved of guilt. Oh, but wait, then fucking just happened, okay? So I write, she gets horny as fuck and has plausible deniability. And then fucking you is something that just happened and it's not her fault. Therefore, she doesn't need to feel like a slut about it. It almost never comes up after we fuck that I broke my rule of not having sex on the first date, okay? They usually say at some point beforehand that, that they have that rule too, but I don't bring it up after the fact either. If she does bring it up after the fact, I'll say that I wanted to make an exception due to the special connection, which is referenced in number two, in, in number two, and that I quote unquote, never do that. <laughs> okay, now here's a big one. Um, I coined this term here. I import, <laughs> I import comfort on credit, okay? I write, this one is beautiful. I actually made this up myself. I realize that girls don't feel bad about fucking if they've gone on a few dates with you. Okay, and this ties in, as we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, actually, I'll probably make a separate video on, on the seven hour rule. Um, yeah, that's what I'll do. This is a lot to say about the anti-slut defense. Um, but I noted, okay, so I'm writing here, I noticed that after you've gone on a few dates with them, it doesn't feel cheap because more comfort and trust is built up. So that's what mystery is getting to with the seven hour in general rule, four to 10 hours, you're building up this comfort and trust. But I wanted to find a way where it wasn't a quantitative amount of time spent, but rather a qualitative time. And I'll get into that in the, in the seven hour rule video. Sorry, not a qualitative amount of time, qualitative level of comfort and trust. So I wanted to be able to do it in like an hour or quicker. Okay, so this is what I, this is what I did. Um, let's see. I will, gener I will generate this comfort, and trust, this comfort and trust on credit by saying shit like, I can tell, because of the special connection I feel, that we're going to hang out a lot more in the future. We have this strong sexual connection and I know we're going to have lots of sex during future hangouts. So I think since we're both so turned on right now that we should just do it. What's the difference if we do it now or wait till next time or the time after? Cut thread escalate. All right, so that means cut off that conversational thread, go into escalating physically. This allows the chick to believe that she will see you again many times and therefore the comfort will be built. This alleviates fears of you fucking her and never calling her again and her being left feeling like a cheap slut. It also de-emphasizes sex as the focus. The focus is the connection and how you're going to enjoy each other's company much more in the future, okay, which is largely non-physical. Okay, I'll say to them also, oh, I like you for so many more reasons besides your looks or besides the sexual aspect. So the focus is the connection and how you're going to enjoy each other's company much more in the future and sex is a part of that in this frame. Therefore, she feels security that she will see you again and that your special connection will blossom and grow and then in parentheses, LOL. <laughs> okay. <laughs> asshole of the year. But no, this is important shit. I mean, this, this is, uh, this is real talk here. Like literally so many guys are getting burned where the chick doesn't want to be slut shamed. And that makes her not go home with you from the club. That makes her not go home with you after the date. It makes her come home with you and not fuck. It makes her fuck you and then feel bad about it and never see you again. So this causes all sorts of problems if you don't have this stuff nailed. So this is a really important video. Make sure you rewatch re this. Um, Okay, number five, I'm almost done with this list. Crushing her anti-slut defense frame and reframing. So anytime the chick makes anti-slut defense statements after doing one, one or more of the items I've already listed, I'll crush her frame and reimpose mine. In this thread's example, when the chick said that she would like to go on many more dates with me before doing anything sexual, I say that I would do that normally, lie, <laughs> in parentheses lie, but I am leaving town. When she says, oh, this was related to some story. When she says Asian girls are not so open, I bust on her for being shy and tell her it's no big deal. I keep framing myself as the prize and the chance to have sex with me as a great opportunity. Let's 
etc. So okay, so <laughs> okay. So yeah, so to recap, you want to say that you have standards, okay? You don't like slutty girls rather than fight against her. Oh, just do it. Like no one will know. Rather than be like the enemy, you know, side with her and make the common enemy the sluttiness. All right. So I'll say, yeah, I don't like slutty girls either, but I can tell that you're not. Next, make things feel meaningful in connection by just asserting that you feel a special connection with her that you normally don't feel. Um, when you're going to leave the club of the day with her, you know, just tell her if she's like, oh, we can't hook up, be like, oh, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't do hookups to strangers either, like, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Don't worry, I'm not like that. I never do that, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then importing comfort on credit. I can tell we're going to hang out a bunch more times, so it doesn't matter if we do it now or in the future, okay? Because of this, and we have this special connection. So it's like importing a bunch of qualitative trust and comfort so that you can get the sexual stuff out of the way and she doesn't need to feel bad about it, all right? And if she still is like afterwards, like, oh, I can't believe I did that. You know, like, what if you disappear now, like, et cetera. Just to be reassuring. No, don't worry, I like you. I'm going to call you again. Actually, let's make plans right now, okay, which ties into how you should be setting up your next date at the end of the first. All right, and lastly, crushing her anti slut defense frame and reframing, okay? So you basically are just like, don't worry, like, you can make an exception here. It's not a big deal, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and just impose your frame. So rewatch this, follow those principles. This is really solid stuff. Like if the girl is going to feel bad about the experience, she's not going to do it, okay? And if you allow her to feel bad about it or do it before that qualitative level of comfort is built up, then she's going to ghost you, which is also bad. So yeah, I mean, I could go on and on about this topic. Re-listen to that post. I literally read it verbatim. And this is this was written in 2012. This shows the the wisdom I had back in the day. I, w I think I wrote this post around like 130 lay count, and now I'm at 1,076. But this has been instrumental. Like these these key points here that I talk about on my channel um, really resonate throughout every area of your game. Okay, this is going to factor in when she's like, should I leave with this guy? I don't know. Am I going to feel like a whore about it? When you're back at the house after a date or taking her home from the club. Should I fuck this guy? I don't know if I'm gonna feel bad about it, okay? Or to she fucks you and then you didn't get that qualitative threshold hit and then she's like, oh, I'm not gonna see that guy. I feel like a huge slut around him, right? Like she just associates like her, her slut shaming with you, right? And blames herself, but also, you know, blames you and feels bad about it and associates with you. So make sure you master these principles and look forward to next week where I will be talking about the seven hour rule and more about how to hit that qualitative aspect of comfort. Thank you guys for tuning in. Have a great weekend. <laughs> Watch my sunny video if you haven't. It's getting a lot of good reception. I'm like ranking number one across like all keywords related to, to different possibilities for his channel, which is awesome. So like and subscribe below. And I will see you guys next week. Oh, and I'm gonna, I promise, infield videos. Got to be like ev my man, Evolution Daily. Just kidding, he's not my man.